recalling this movie again. Bray, why? You sure you don't want to go with the bear and the bow? She only uses a bow a few times. We don't want to give people the wrong idea about our movie. So I've been watching all the Disney princess films. It's not important why right now, but in one day, I watched both Pocahontas and Brave back to back. I honestly didn't expect Brave to be the worst film. Oh yeah, that's how we're starting this video. I'm going to say it right here for the record. Brave is worse than Pocahontas. Brave is worse than a lot of films. It is bad. It is very, very bad. I thought this would just be generic and cliche. That's what Not So Brave's reputation seems to be these days. It was one of Pixar's first films after a string of big hits that are still their most popular to this day. Up, Wally, and Toy Story 3. People seem to remember the film okay, especially as it was the last original property that Pixar worked on for a while. Well, original. I suppose we should start with the most obvious complaint about the movie. OMG, you guys! This is like so totally a ripoff of Brother Bear. Hashtag Pixar is over party. The 90s was so much better. This is a complaint about Brave that I've never understood. Until I actually watch the movie, but we'll get to that later. Whenever Disney remakes are brought up, one of the things that is always said, without fail, is stop remaking things that were already good. You can't top the original. Remake something that didn't work. And while Brother Bear is starting to become some of a cult classic, it's a film that has problems that are hard to deny. Brother Bear is awkwardly paced at times. The film's comic relief characters aren't quite as bad as the horse from Home on the Range, but they're not even living in the shadow of Mushu, let alone the genie. Disney trying to take another stab at something that didn't work was actually an experiment with a load of potential. The only thing that you had to do was make it not suck. You had one job, Disney. One job! In the end, we got Pixar's worst work. Yes, this film is worse than Cars 2. It is worse than The Good Dinosaur. It's certainly worse than Brother Bear. Brave isn't just ordinary garbage. It's advanced garbage, with more problems than Merida has knots in her hair. Let's knock them out one by one. I'm aiming for bullseyes here. Let's start with the most pressing issue. This is the least original film that I've ever seen in my life. Disney's Mother Bear is only the tip of the iceberg. If this was made by literally any other studio, it would have the exact reputation that Quest for Camelot does now. No, it's what you've been preparing me for my whole life. I, I don't want a new dress. I want to save Camelot. Even though that film is, once again, better than Brave. The ogre's butt. No, I'm not taking that back. Brave stars a princess. Princess Merida. Stop me if you heard this one before. She doesn't want to be a princess. Oh yeah, Jasmine. However, there's a big difference. Merida is betrothed, but she doesn't want to be married. Oh yeah, that's also Jasmine's story. I, I should watch Aladdin some more because it it's clear that Disney hasn't. How about this though? Merida is having a conflict with one of her parents concerning royal duties, so she seeks out a witch that gives her a spell that causes a magical transformation. Under the sea. Under the sea. Well, uh, this time it's different. The princess has red hair this time. I... I don't get this! I've already called this a Disney film and will continue to do so, but we all know that it's a Pixar film. But it doesn't feel like one, does it? And I don't mean that in terms of Pixar quality. No, it feels like it's not a Pixar film from its inception. Pixar films, even the bad ones, are all about higher concepts and more out there ideas. Giving life to toys or emotions or small little robots. Even when it comes to something like Cars or The Good Dinosaur, just watching them, you know that it's a Pixar film. No other studio would make a film like that. Even when they don't work, there's always a deeper idea in Pixar films that it's clear that someone was trying to convey. Pixar films are all idea-based, except for Brave. But so what? Maybe one day Pixar just wanted to make a film on the same level as The Swan Princess. What's wrong with that? So what if it's a rip-off? Ignoring the fact that The Swan Princess is also better than Brave, this is not a good ripoff. It takes parts haphazardly from other Disney films without thinking of their implications or how they go together. Our film stars Princess Merida. There is only one thing that you need to know about Merida. I hate her. She... I've got duties, responsibilities, expectations. Never... This is all for naught. Stops. I suppose a princess just does what she's told. Complaining. Oh, this is so unfair. Ever. There's no point in having a go at me. Maybe she does, like, at the end of the film? <sighs> Does she think we're just going to happen upon the witch's cottage? But for, like, 90% of the film, that is Merida's character. 
There are so many examples I can bring up, but the big one is when she's complaining that she doesn't want to be betrothed. And I already know what you're thinking. Doesn't Jasmine also complain about being betrothed? You don't hate her or Aladdin, do you? Here's the difference between Brave and Aladdin. Aladdin knows that it's a fairy tale. Brave does not. Do you know what happens in Aladdin if Jasmine doesn't get married? I have no idea. The film never mentions it. So I can only assume that nothing will happen. Especially the Sultan can just arbitrarily change the rule in the end. This betrothal is completely arbitrary in Aladdin. Do you know what happens if Merida doesn't get married? Well, the movie implies that it will start a goddamn war! No, I'm not looking too deeply into things. Merida pulls a stunt, winning her own hand in the archery competition, and that gets the lords in an uproar. And the movie all but states that the only reason a war didn't break out is because the king managed to smooth things over. I'm sure that this archery thing probably looked a badass in the trailer, but in the actual movie, it almost caused hundreds of people to die. Merida isn't just complaining about wearing fancy dresses or being prim and proper. The movie conflates these things with actual royal duties and places them on an equal level when they're not. Not even in context. Speaking of badass marketing, the poster and just about all the material shows Merida holding her bow, getting ready to fight. 90% of the fighting she actually does is with her mother. And now I understand why the mother is dead in most princess films. Because these two together are fucking insufferable. These two apart are insufferable. Merida wants to... how did the movie put it? I don't want to get married! I want to stay single and let my hair flow in the wind as I ride through the glen! Firing arrows into the sunset. You know, even if that means hundreds have to die for that to happen. But Eleanor beats in the lessons so obnoxiously and so oftenly that I almost agree that it'd be worth it for Merida to disobey her just to spite this person. The scene with the corset where Eleanor is literally ignoring her daughter being in pain is a shining example on her end. That's even ignoring that this is a cliche in and of itself. Get those corsets laced properly. I can hear you speak without gasping. Actually, no. Let's talk about how determined this movie is to be as cliched as possible. This film takes place at a time when corsets didn't exist in Scotland, so it broke historical accuracy to add this in. A scene that is already cliché to make her mother look awful and detached as possible. I, I don't even know why I'm complaining. This movie doesn't history in general right. This whole marriage is what you want! In what monarchy does the queen betroth the princess over the king? Maybe I'm speaking from ignorance here, but this entire conversation makes no goddamn sense. This is so unfair! <laughs> unfair! You were never there for me! Oh, I'm so sorry, Merida. Next time your mother will actually show up at your ballet recital, I swear! I'll never be like no, you! No, stop that! I'd rather die than be like you! <gasps> you know, I don't know why people seem to meme on Merida's accent. Like, even Disney does this. Ugh. Lang me your lumdy give me a moose nail, lee your gun away a tear drop in his eye. Hey, she back me, lassie! Maybe it's because she's the only princess who actually has an accent, but as someone who actually has a lot of trouble understanding heavy accents, Merida's is perfectly fine and understandable. I can hear exactly how much of a colossal bitch she is with every single word that she says. My favorite scene of the whole movie is when Merida gives her mother a spelled piece of food, and it looks like Eleanor is dying. And despite this, all Merida cares about is the fucking wedding. I'll just tell them the wedding's off then. Merida, breaking female stereotypes. The one thing on her mind at all times is a wedding, even when her mother is dying right in front of her. At this point in the film, Eleanor had already lost me completely, but she's in pain, severe pain, and Merida doesn't give a shit. Sure, she walks Eleanor up to her room, but it's all wedding this and wedding that. Have you changed your mind at all about the marriage? Then maybe in a bit you might have something new to say on the marriage. So uh, I'll just tell them the wedding's off then. How do you feel about the marriage now? Merida! I think it's supposed to be funny, but it's just not. And, and yeah, let, let's talk about the bear in the room. So when Merida goes into the witch's cottage, she says something very peculiar. I want a spell to change my mum. I could try to phrase Merida's desire a hundred different ways, never reusing a single word twice, and all of them would sound more natural than how Merida phrased that. Seriously, that's how you word it? I need a spell to change my mom. While Frozen feels like it was rewritten 50 times, this film couldn't have possibly be written even a single time. Because this is placeholder dialogue. You can't convince me it's not. Not only is it unnatural, it's not even what Merida wants. She doesn't want her mother to change. 
She wants her mom to listen to her or leave her alone or let her do what she wants. Merida doesn't care who her mother is as a person. I mean, she says that her mother is quote unquote a beast, but we never really do get Merida's opinions on her character, except the aspects that relate directly back to Merida. What did you do, dear? Nothing. But uh, let's talk about that bear stuff. Do you want to know how to use foreshadowing? Watch Brave and never do what Brave does. The bear shit in this movie is so obnoxious. Look, the witch's cottage is full of bears. Merida's father is the Bear King, who fought and lost his leg to a bear. Merida's pendant has bears on it. Why? Because Eleanor changes into a bear, and for no other reason. Period. And why does Eleanor change into a bear instead of, I don't know, a unicorn? In-universe, I can only assume it's because the witch really fucking likes bears. I am sure there's probably something involving symbolism and folklore, but that's supposed to be the subtext, not the actual text. In the movie, it's out of nowhere and makes no sense. Let's go back to Brother Bear for a minute. Kenai transforms into a bear. Do you know why he turns into a bear and not a caribou? Because Kenai killed a bear. The curse directly translated to the course of action. If Brave worked the same way, Eleanor would have been turned into a donkey. Yes, Merida does call Eleanor a beast, but there are so many different types of beasts in the real world, let alone a fantasy. You wanna know why Eleanor changes into a bear? She changes into a bear specifically because it's the worst specific thing for her to be due to plot convenience and due to no other actual reason. It is so forced. As in, it made more sense for the agents in Cars 2 to think that Mater was a spy. Cars 2 gave me a better explanation for its setup. Brother Bear also made great use of expression. Say what you want about their actual personality, but the characters in that film all emoted perfectly, and it really heightened the slapstick in that film. Can I say the same thing about Brave? Well, I'll tell you, when I can actually see something! The film was made primarily around Merida's hair, believe it or not. Pixar had to upgrade their engine to actually render this film. It's vibrant and fiery, and it's always visible. Even when things are super dark, she sticks out on screen. However, Eleanor changes into a black bear. And most of this film after she changes, takes place at night. Or in dark castle hallways. Even with the lights out in my room. At night, with my screen brightness maxed out, there were scenes that I could barely make out. I can't believe I just said that. When they were derping around Stonehenge, I literally thought that Eleanor was a pillar for a second. Maybe it's just my computer to be fair. On a big screen theater, it might be more visible, but this isn't a problem that I've had with any other movie that I've seen, animated or not. Even during the day, Eleanor can be hard to read as a bear because the shadows are just that heavy. Eleanor being a bear and trying to adjust to it is supposed to be one of the main sources of humor in the film. Like when she set up a full table and she tries to keep acting like the queen. But it's not funny because she doesn't really express very well. One film this is not as bad as is The Lion King 2019, but uh, it shares one of its problems. Then again, maybe it's not the expressions. Maybe it's just because the humor in general in this film is bad. The slapstick very much reeks of this is a new engine and we don't entirely know how to use it yet. Since Pixar films both before and since do physical humor so much better, most of the comic relief comes from Merida's triplet brothers. I could tell you how much I want to shoot them with a bow and arrow, but I'll only highlight one particular scene in the film. In order to get a key, they need to reach into a woman's breasts. This is a Pixar film, which surprises me more and more that I think about it. There is a lot of toilet humor in this film. And like, why? Did they think that all the talks about diplomacy and the mother-daughter fighting would have bored the young kids in the audience? Successful or not, this is supposedly one of Pixar's more serious films. The visual style and the marketing showcases it being more dark than Pixar's usual fare, and the backstory of the bear monster shows that the creature is still waiting in the wings. The butt's humor is so tonally inconsistent. Another thing you gotta give Cars 2 credit for, it feels like everything in that movie belongs in that movie. There is actually one joke in this movie, though, that I do think works. It's when Merida and her mother have snuck back into the castle. They're doing the charades thing. You know, it's another cliche where someone is taking notes and advice from someone hiding in the background. But I think it's actually funny here because everyone is one foot in front of her. And they can all clearly see that she's talking past them. That's not a joke. That is a moment that we are supposed to take seriously. You mean the moment where the mother tells Merida that she can break tradition, which very might cause a war. Yes, that one. This movie is so incoherent. There's another moment in the woods. Eleanor takes off her crown, and the movie gives a lot of focus on that crown. When she walks a little bit too far away, she goes completely feral. The movie is conveying that the crown is what allows Eleanor to keep her human mind. However, when she goes feral the next time, it's because she was looking at some apples in Merida's room. 
and then she changes back to human when she accidentally hurts Merida. Is it just me? Am I the only one who thought this? During the first time that I watched this film, I really thought that the crown was what allowed Eleanor to retain her human mind. Because that's what this shot implies! If that's not how it works, why put focus on the crown? In a film, especially an animated one, there really is no such thing as an accident. Someone decided to film it like this, edit it like this, and call it a finished product for a reason. I don't get anything about this film. None of the decisions make any sense. A witch turned mum into a bear, it's not my fault. But the stupidest part of the movie, oh my god, the stupidest part of this movie. So Merida thinks in order to change her mother back, she needs to sew up the tapestry. That's not what really needs to happen, but that's what Merida thinks needs to happen. All Merida has to do is go into a room and sew up the tapestry. And she brings her mother along, her mother, who is a bear, into the castle of the Bear King. Famous for fighting and losing his leg to a bear. Famous for hating bears. After the castle was in an uproar over a bear sighting that they barely escaped from. Is Eleanor the only one who knows where the tapestry is? No, Merida knows exactly where it is. The tapestry is in her bedroom. Maybe Eleanor is the only one who knows how to sew. Merida is the one who sews up the tapestry. What? 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 Error! Error! What? What? Error! Does not compute! Does not compute! Does not compute! To give the most benefit that I can, Eleanor does tear off a sewer grate allowing them to sneak into the castle. Oh wait! Merida can just walk into her own fucking home. Why couldn't Eleanor wait outside? Even if she went feral again, she wouldn't have gotten very far, since just walking into the castle would have taken 15 minutes tops. I tell you what actually changes Eleanor back, but I legitimately do not know. Unless... Saruman. It's the best explanation that you're getting out of this film. Merida sews up the tapestry long before Eleanor changes back, and if we're talking about the bond between both of them being mended, that happened before the tapestry was sewn off, during the whole charade scene. The brothers also changed into bears and back, despite not having any bonds that they needed to mend. I don't even know why this film is called Brave. Kiara is more brave than Merida. Beyond that though, bravery isn't even Merida's character traits. She learns humbleness and understanding. As for actual combat, she doesn't do much of that, and most of her fighting isn't exactly brave. The title literally has nothing to do with the movie, except for a random title drop at the end, which does buck all to explain it. Our fate lives within us. You only have to be brave enough to see it. Give Brother Bear one thing, at least it was cohesive. This movie doesn't even seem finished. I'm not joking. Between the unlikable characters spouting first draft dialogue, ideas that just don't work with any bit of scrutiny, and plot holes so large you can ride a bear through them. The only positive thing I can think of is the music, but maybe that's just because I'm a sucker for Celtic music. Hello Quest for Camelot. Actually, now that I think about it, the best part of this film might be how it makes me appreciate other movies more. Legit, I I'm surprised that Pixar put this out. Yes, even compared to The Good Dinosaur, Cars 2. Hell, even Planes makes more sense than this. To say that this feels rushed would be an understatement. Statement. That's a good word here. What statement do you think this film is supposed to be? Like, what do you think that they wanted to convey here in the end? With Toy Story and Up and Wally and Ratatouille and all of the other wonderful films you associate with Pixar, you can see the statements that they were trying to make, what they were trying to say. At best, this is reused bits and pieces from far better movies. At worst, it's an unlikable piece of nonsense. I don't know why this exists. It's been a long time since I've been surprised about how bad a film actually is. This. This won the Academy Award over Wreck-It Ralph. Wow, I'm a whole new level of surprised on that one. But that's a rant for another day. As for now, it's time to prepare for a very special episode. I'll see you guys at number 200.